Proverbs this morning. Uh, we're going to cover a topic about favor, finding good favor. Favors mentioned 89 times in the scriptures. We'll turn to Proverbs chapter 22 and start there. Proverbs chapter 22. Pondering Proverbs this morning, I want to talk about favor. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 22, and uh, we'll read verse number 1. Proverbs chapter 22, and uh, verse number 1, the Bible says this, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we sure thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for an opportunity this morning uh, to sing and praise your name. We thank you for a chance to open the Word of God. Uh, Lord, as we come to the Sunday school hour, pondering Proverbs uh, has been our theme, and we want to pause just for a few minutes this morning, ponder uh, this topic of favor. I pray, Lord, you'd help me, Lord, the things that you've shown me, the things that we've studied uh, Lord, that I've studied, Lord, I pray, Lord, I can bring forth to these thy people in such a way, Lord, that it will enlighten them. It will help them to ponder uh, having favor with God. Help us this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'll read the verse again. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Not part of our Sunday school lesson, but uh, I believe you ought to have a good name, a good testimony. I tell my children often, you're a smith do right. You're a smith. And people in the community will learn that the name Smith and they'll know about the Smith boys and know about the Smith girls and it'll carry a, a connotation. It'll carry a, a, a favor with it or a reputation, may I say. And you ought to have a good name. You ought to have a good name and uh, stuff. And that's why I'm a Baptist. Amen. I want a good name. I want a good name on the sign out there. Baptist means something. Amen. If you, you find a Roman Catholic church, that Roman Catholic, it means something. You, you have, have a Muslim temple, a mosque, it means something. Whenever you hear that Muslim, Islam, when you hear uh, Roman Catholicism, when you hear Church of God, when you hear Pentecostal holiness, when you hear uh, Church of the Nazarene or United Methodist, it comes with, with, with a reputation of something. Something pops in your mind, and uh, I, I'm thankful that I'm a Baptist this morning uh, for the doctrine uh, the, uh, the King James Bible and things of that nature, but uh, that's not part of our lesson. That was free this morning. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and along with it, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. And I want to talk with you about favor. It's rather to be chosen. Better than great riches, better to, than to have uh, silver and gold, you are to have loving favor and stuff. Um, Look there, if you will, in Proverbs, I'm sorry, uh, Proverbs chapter number 31 and show you a contrast here. And then we'll pick up a, a definition. <clears throat> All right, Proverbs 31, and uh, look at verse number 30. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now, I open up by saying you ought to want favor. And our topic is loving favor and obtaining favor with God. So now the Bible says in the same book, Pondering Proverbs, favor is deceitful. So let me ask you this, what does favor mean then? If favor can be deceitful, but yet you should choose it <laughs> rather than great riches, what's it talking about here? We'll go back for a Bible definition. Go back to Genesis, uh, Genesis 29. We don't usually leave the book of Proverbs when we're pondering it, but we will this morning for a definition and show you some things. Genesis chapter number 29. This is the second time it's mentioned. If I'm not mistaken, I'm just going to check a reference. I believe it's chapter 17 is the first mention. No, it's uh, chapter 18. We'll look at that in just a second. Genesis chapter number 29 and verse number 17. Genesis 29, 17 says this. 
Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. This is the second time it's mentioned in the Bible, and I thought it brought out a very good um, definition, biblical definition, insight to the word favor. Look at the context, verse number 15. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? So he's saying, well, what's it worth? You're working for me. What should I owe you? Uh, what's it worth to, to live with me and to work and uh, be my herdsman and those things? In verse 16, and Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And it goes on. And so uh, it says there in, uh, we'll keep reading, um, verse number 19. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but a few days, for he loved, uh, for the love he had to her. And so what we pick up is uh, uh, the word favor. It says that Rachel was well favored. It was worth Jacob serving for seven years to obtain her. And so we think about something about the, the word worth or value or value. And so go back there, if you will, in Genesis 18. Genesis chapter 18 is the law of first mention. Genesis 18 and uh, verse number 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door of, in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. This is Abraham. And said, My Lord, watch it, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore ye shall come to your servants. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make re uh, ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the young men and hastened to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf that he had dressed and uh, set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. I read that just to get the context of what's going on. Abraham's in the tent door. Three men come and stand there before him, and he tells them, hey, if I found favor in your sight, Terry here, just for a little bit, just wait. I'm going to go yonder. I'm going to get you some water. Sit down, wash your feet. I'm going to go get you a, a morsel of bread. And what did he do? He went and not only got him some bread. How long would it take to actually knead the dough and bake the bread? Two minutes? Ten? What do you think? 30 minutes, an hour, <laughs> you know, uh, you're actually making the bread. And then he's killing a calf. So the calf is up walking around. <laughs> he's killing the calf and he's dressing it, so uh, dividing the meat there and then cooking, you know, roasting some meat too. How long would that take? Five minutes? Ten? <laughs> so you're looking at a couple hours, right? I'm being facetious there. <laughs> it's, you're looking at a couple hours and so whenever he tells them, if I have found well faith, if I'm favor in your, if I found favor in your sight, tarry here, and I'm going to do this for you. And so they had uh, the chance there to reason in their mind, so to speak. Uh, we know this picture of the Lord there, but uh, w they had a chance to reason their mind. Am I going to wait? Is it going to be worth the wait? What's the value of sitting here, you know, under this shade tree, washing our feet for? four or five hours, <laughs> and then eating, and then we, we leave. And so I say all that to show you a couple references there that uh, I believe in Abraham's uh, text there, I believe it has something to do with value or worth. 
Is it worth the wait? Is it worth the value? And, and uh, obviously with Rachel, I think it's a good thing. She was beautiful and well-favored and uh, stuff, and, and it was worth the wait. It was, she was valued. Rachel was valued so high, worth working for seven years to obtain that. And so now we go back to Proverbs, Proverbs, and uh, the Bible says to choose loving favor rather than great riches. And you want to be favorable to God, but now favorable uh, favor is deceitful, the Bible says. So what is that? It be, it's because there are some people that can lower your value because of your beauty, because of this or that, maybe your talent, and they want to use and abuse you. <laughs> they favor you. They think you're worth something for them, <laughs> for their self-greed. And, of course, in the context is, is about a woman, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And so some men will value, will make a, a woman worth, feel she's worth something for, the wrong, for self, self-pleasure and self-greed and uh, things of that nature. And that's why it can be deceitful. Uh, so what is your worth? And so whenever we talk about favors deceitful, that's in a carnal context, right? But uh, we're, we're emphasizing in pondering Proverbs, what's your worth unto the Lord? We want to find good favor, good favor and stuff. And so uh, we'll, we'll look at some of these things. Look there at, at uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 and uh, verse number 4, and then we'll back up. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4 says, So shalt thou find favor and good understanding, watch it, in the sight of God and man. I want to be well worth something to the Lord. I want the Lord to say, hey, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And so I want to find favor. It's not something that just haphazardly happens upon you. And so look at the context in verse number 1. Proverbs 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor. So how do you find favor? By keeping The law in your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And uh, you need to memorize scripture. You need to memorize that book. You need to hide it in your heart. And uh, I say this often from the pulpit, and I'm not being mean. I'm not trying to be ugly. Uh, Not even trying to uh, have conviction. I think that's the job of the Holy Spirit, not my job to convict you. But uh, if you did not have your Bible, how much Bible could you verbatim accurately quote and say? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Um, the, The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. I have esteemed thy word more than my necessary food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And uh, this book's important. It's vitally important to your spiritual well-being. It's more important than your necessary food. How much food is necessary for you to live, just to live? But this is more necessary for your spiritual well-being. And uh, uh, some, some of us, and uh, some of you, lack having enough Bible in there, in your heart. And so we see one way to find favor and good understanding the sight of God is that you bind the law of God, the commandments of God. You bind mercy, verse 3. You bind mercy and truth um, about, you write it upon the table of thine heart. It's so imperative. It's so important. Learn the precious promises, and uh, learn the, the Word of God and keep it in your heart. That's one way, according to the Bible, as we ponder Proverbs and ponder favor. That's one way you can get it, 
is to write the Word of God upon your heart and God will be well pleased. You'll be worth something to the Lord. I uh, think there in Genesis chapter uh, 39, look there right quick. A little side note, uh, you remember Joseph and all that he, uh, Joseph, went through uh, being forsaken by his brethren, being uh, his brethren deceiving their father, sold as a slave unto Potiphar, and thrown into prison unjustly, unjustly. And the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 39 and verse number 6. We'll start in verse 4. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. Uh, that's Potiphar there entrusting this slave, Joseph, this young boy, uh, he, he saw, he found grace in his sight, and he entrusted him and made him overseer in all his house. Verse 5, And it came to pass from, that, from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save that uh, the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was goodly, uh, excuse me, and Joseph was a goodly person, watch it, and well favored, well favored. Verse 21, Genesis 39, 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. We fast forwarded there in uh, the chapter, but what happened is God, uh, uh, Joseph, was a goodly person. He behaved himself wisely, and he was a slave unjustly. He had been done wrong. He had been done dirty by his brethren, but Joseph did right anyway. And because of that, the Lord, uh, he found grace with God, and he found favor with Potiphar. Potiphar made him a, a ruler over all his house. And then if you know the story, uh, jo uh, Potiphar's wife came and uh, manipulated him and, and things and tried to seduce him and tried to do uh, some things against him, and Joseph refused. And because he refused, so Potiphar's wife turned and said that he tried to rape her. She lied. <laughs> And Potiphar came home, and Potiphar heard this servant tried to rape my wife, and he threw him in prison. But because of Joseph doing right and being a goodly person, the Bible says in verse 21, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You know, the Lord could give you favor in somebody else's sight. Somebody else could see you and have favor towards you, think you're worth something, think you're valuable <laughs> unto them or anything else because you're, uh, you have favor in God's sight and stuff. And uh, wh what a thing. Uh, that's very merciful of the Lord. But uh, showing all that to show that uh, there in Proverbs 3, it was keeping the law. If you know anything about, uh, about Joseph, Joseph had a promise of God, a dream of God that he was going to be great one day. But that wasn't what was happening in his life. But Joseph had the word of God in his heart. Psalm said the word of the Lord tried him and stuff. And it was actually in particular speaking of him being in prison and stuff. And so we see about favor. Let's look at Proverbs chapter number 8. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 35. Proverbs 8 and 35. Just talking about finding favor, good favor with the Lord. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 35 says this, For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. You obtain favor by finding me. Who's me? If you'll read the chapter and back up, look there in verse number um, 11. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that thou that may be desired or not to be compared to it. I 
wisdom dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions it goes on but uh, what it is is wisdom is personified as a person there I am wisdom I do this I do that and it begins taking uh, uh, wisdom and personify it, uh, personifying it uh, as a person and so it says in verse 35, you can read the chapter later, it's good about wisdom. But whoso findeth me, so the me would be wisdom. Whoso findeth wisdom, findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. You know what, uh, that's what we've been pondering, uh, Proverbs 4, is to obtain favor. Uh, to, to obtain wisdom, to gain understanding and perception. And if you have wisdom... If you have wisdom and re wisdom uh, dwelleth with you and you retain wisdom and instruction and uh, discretion, then God will have you favor with you. God don't want a fool. God does not favor a foolish person that makes foolish decisions, that wrecks their life. God shows you, hey, son, this is the way you need to go. And you refuse that and rebel against it and go this way. Well, you're still God's child if you're saved, you're born again. But he ain't going to be very favorable to that. You're making foolish decisions. I'm tired. I'm tired of it. And we understand that. Look there at Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. I desire you to have favor. To have favor. I, I desire to have favor. I think it is worth more than silver and gold and all the things that you can desire are better to have favor with God uh, than to have great riches. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 35 as well. Proverbs 13, 35. Righteousness, excuse me, I was reading verse 34. The king's favor is towards a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that calls a shame. I can relate to that as an employer as an employer uh, that uh, I have a, a few different employees, not right now, but sometimes, <laughs> and uh, whenever I have employees and someone that uh, they listen to what I say and the instructions and I, I, I tell them to do this job or do that job and I tell them how to do it, the process, and when they complete those things, well, I, I see their value. I see they're a good employee. I want to keep them. I want to give them a raise. I want to help them out and make work, uh, the work environment as pleasurable as possible and enjoy it and things like that. But when I have a, a, a shameful servant, <laughs> a shameful employee that makes a mess and wastes not only time but wastes material and wastes money and, and uh, hurts my company, you know, they might still be my employee. Maybe they've not done anything to be fired by, right? <laughs> I ain't letting them go. They're still my employee. But I ain't showing them favor. I, I don't see a lot of value in that person and, uh, and stuff. And that has to do with being wise and having wisdom. Look at Proverbs chapter 11. Go back to Proverbs 11, verse 27. Proverbs 11, verse 27. Proverbs 11, 27. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor. It's a good word. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. Procureth favor. If you diligently seek good, the Bible says you procureth favor. What's the word procure, uh, procureth mean? <laughs> Something we don't use very much. It means to get, to obtain. And so you see that if you are diligently seeking good, then you will obtain, you will get favor. And stuff, uh, it's, a, it's a cause and effect type situation. Cause and effect is what pure cure has to. Um, if you cultivate a ground and plant seed and work a garden, if you cultivate that and you work at it and you work hard on that garden and you weed it every evening and spend time watering it and, and uh, all those things and make sure it has adequate sunlight and all the things you need to do, and you work at that, diligently work at a garden and cultivate that, you know what you'll have? You'll have a good harvest. You'll have good crops. And so that's the picture of pure curing, is you're doing something to get something. It's cause and effect. And if you are diligently seeking good, diligently seeking good, then there, that's the cause, and the effect is you'll get favor. You'll get favor. 
And uh, it's a good verse there, a good word. Uh, but he, look at the contrast, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. So which one do you want? You want favor? You want mischief? What do you want? Look at Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, verse 9. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. So you see, being righteous, you can get favor by being righteous. Among the righteous, there's favor. Look at Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 2. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. Con uh, condemn. And uh, so you see that obtaineth favor, why? By being good. Just do right. Just do right. We had a song we used to sing with the kids, do right till the stars fall. When's the stars going to fall? <laughs> they ain't going to fall. And so you just do right. Just do right. And uh, that obtains favor of God. And I just want to do right. Just want to do right. It's not always easy. It's not always the easiest course or the smoothest road. But do right and you'll obtain favor of the Lord. And that's greater than riches. Uh, and uh, then loving favor, all those things. So uh, you seek right. Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Well, that's a very powerful verse there, especially end. I, I quote that verse often, the way of transgressor is hard. But good understanding giveth favor. And boy, I want that. I want somebody, I want God to have favor with me, and I want to diligently seek good. I want to procure a favor with God that when I'm a mess, when I mess up, Lord's favorable, okay, I'll give you mercy. All right, I'll help you out. I'll give you grace. I'll, I'll help you out. But someone that's a transgressor, the way of transgressor is hard. You keep messing up, and the Lord's going to chasten you, chasten you, get up. You know, all these things, it's hard on you. And uh, I, I want to have favor with the Lord, and that's by having good understanding. It giveth favor. Having understanding gives you something. There's worth. Uh, people don't think the Christian life and living right. Uh, people want it here and now. They, they want ple the pleasure of sin is for a season. They want money and wealth and all these things and uh, favor on Facebook. They want everybody to like them and all those things. It's false. It's deceitful. That's where that favor is deceitful and it's wrong. But you want favor with God. And uh, you want to look at the long haul of things and see good understanding giveth favor and things. Look at Proverbs 18. Proverbs chapter number 18. Proverbs chapter 18, I'm in 17. Proverbs 18, verse 22. Whoso, this is my son's favorite verse, I think he's memorized this. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. I find that very, very interesting. We've been looking at good things and all these things, but uh, you know there's not a lot of good women to choose from. We were talking about this at work the other day, uh, me and my customer. There's not a lot of good men out there, but there ain't a lot of good women out there either anymore. And to find a wife findeth a good thing, but if you look in Proverbs alone and you look at what a good wife is, it's not, not easy to find. <laughs> And uh, you obtain favor of the Lord. I, I don't know how, uh, as, as your pastor, I don't know how to uh, put it all together on all the verses on favor in Proverbs and throughout the scriptures and tied into why the Lord, why you obtain favor with God for finding a wife. I don't know. Tobias has been studying that. He, he's just been seeking a wife. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that's what the Bible says. You obtain favor with the Lord. And so I give it to you because it's biblical truth. 
uh, how to tie it all together with uh, doing right and having wisdom and having understanding and being wise and being righteous and doing good and procuring favor. How's that tied into being finding a wife? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe uh, somebody in here, uh, Tobias, will figure it out or something. I don't know. Uh, and y'all can enlighten me. But it's in there. It's in there. And so I try to give you all the, the verses. And so I saved that one for last uh, there. But it says, uh, you obtain favor of the Lord. Um, and so there are several ways to obtain favor uh, that we saw this morning. And I, I hope you took some notes. I hope you take it to heart that uh, hiding God's word, thy law, writing it upon the table of thine heart, then shalt thou find uh, good understanding and find favor with the Lord, um, doing right, uh, having uh, wisdom and understanding, having that discretion, s diligently seeking good, procureth favor. And I want that. I want favor with the Lord. I'm thankful I have found a good wife and uh, stuff. I, uh, you know, I, f I find a, a good thing in my wife, uh, Casey, and so I'm thankful for that. So I guess I obtained favor with the Lord uh, because of those things. But uh, nonetheless, y'all pray about these things. And uh, what I desire is not just to teach you these things to give you head knowledge. I want you to uh, apply it to your life. Apply it, implement it into your life and, and find favor with God and uh, we'll be, you'll be a better Christian because of it, a better wife, a better father, a better man, a better child because of it and uh, stuff. And then I, I believe the Lord will make us a better church. If we all just collectively here, I know we're down, a couple people sick this morning, but uh, if we all collectively would implement some things and try to diligently seek good within our church, I believe the Lord would be well favored with us and I believe uh, we could procure favor with God, and that's what we want here at Victory Baptist Church. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for these biblical truths to ponder. Uh, help us to implement them in our life. Help us to understand how to do so and choose good things and have wisdom and understanding in our life. Uh, find wisdom. I pray, Lord, you'd help us, Lord. Uh, help us to implement them into our life in such a way that we can truly find favor with you, uh, Lord, in our personal life, our individual life, uh, Lord, as well as our, our church family. Help Victory Baptist Church be well favored in the sight of God that we can make a difference and do, uh, Lord, what you would have us to do here in the county, reaching souls uh, for your honor, for your glory. Bless now the service, and we'll love you and thank you in Christ's name. Amen.